Hi, and welcome to my video about how to do machine sewing for the shields. Now you should have, since you're making three shields, you should have three of the waterproof layer, six of the top and bottom layer, and six pockets. Now to start, you're going to put your bottom layer right side up. And then you're going to put your pockets on the sides. You want to make sure that the folded edge of the pocket is facing the inside of the shield. You want the raw edge over here. You'll do the same for the other side, the folded edge toward the inside of the shield and the raw edge right here. You'll put your top layer over that, right side down. Match up the edges as well as you can. It's okay if it's not perfect. And then you put your waterproof layer on top of that. And if you're using a waterproof layer that has a dull side and a shiny side, you'll want it shiny side up. Now you're gonna hold, you gotta pin your, your layers in place so they don't move around too much. I like to use binder clips. You can use paper clips or clothes pins or chip clips, but you don't wanna use pins because pins will put holes in your waterproof layer. Once you have all of your layers pinned together, you're gonna get your sewing machine out. You're gonna thread your sewing machine uh, every sewing machine is a little different, so you'll need to look up what to do specifically for your sewing machine and how to thread it. And you're going to make a straight stitch all around the edge of the shield. Now, if you've never done a straight stitch before or you're not familiar with your sewing machine, I recommend you take a scrap of fabric and you do some stitches through that. Once you're ready to go, you're going to sew at a quarter inch allowance. You're going to start at the edge of a pocket right here. Once you've gotten to this point where where you started is right here, you're going to keep going, do a back stitch, and end right there, leaving this part open. You're going to trim your ends. And now you're going to cut the extra fabric off of the side. You're going to want it to be a quarter of an inch or about three or four millimeters away from the stitches so that everything is neater and shorter, but it's not too close so that your stitches come out. Once you finish that, you're going to turn it right side out. So you're going to go to the edge that's still open. You're going to have the waterproof layer and the bottom layer on one side and the pocket and the top layer on the other. And you're going to go in and turn it right side out. And make sure you really push out those corners. You can use a chopstick or a knitting needle or something like that to, uh, to really get those corners out if you're having trouble with it. Okay, now you've got this. It looks great. 
Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this pocket over to the other side if it's not there already. So you want this pocket with the raw edge on the side where there isn't a pocket on the bottom. And you're gonna take your sewing machine again. Okay, you've got your machine. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a straight stitch right along here. Of course, you're gonna use a back stitch. You're still using a quarter inch seam allowance. And then you're gonna trim that just like you did with the other, uh, other side. Daddy's shoe. And then you're going to flip this pocket over to the other side and really push out those corners there. There. All right, so now you should have something that looks like this. Now, the last thing to, well, second to last thing to do is to go around again. This time you're going to use an eighth of an inch quarter a quarter seam or an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You're going to do a back stitch over where the pocket is, or the edge of the pocket, I should say. That strengthens it so that no matter how you pull on the pocket, it won't come undone as easily. Once you've gone around the edge, it should lay flatter. And that extra layer keeps all of the stitches in and prevents them from coming out too easily. Now the very last thing to do is to put something on the, on the ends here to keep it in place in your underwear. My favorite is to use snaps. This one has snaps and they're my favorite because they're really simple and they stay really well. And if you get the, I think most of them aren't gonna, gonna melt in the dryer. I mean, these, the ones I have are fairly cheap and they haven't melted in the dryer. So they're a good option. Another option is Velcro. I put Velcro on the ends of this one. And it, it's fine, it's just, it's a little loud. Same with the snaps. The snaps are a little bit loud if you're in a public restroom. And in the wash, the Velcro catches on to other clothes. And another option is a button. Now, if you're going to do a button, you're going to need to cut a slit in one side right here and then do a blanket stitch around the edge. And then you sew your button on. And then you secure it around your underwear. Just like this. So any way you choose will be fine. With the button, that also isn't going to catch on anything in the wash, and it's pretty quiet in a public restroom. So those are the advantages with that. It's not as fast as the snaps or the Velcro, though. But, you know, I imagine you get much faster the more you used it. So those are how to make the shields. And next, I'm going to show you how to make the liners. Thank you for watching. Thank you.